Ninjas. My name is Sam World, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to mix and master. We're gonna be doing a mix and master for our Dirty Bird style track in FL Studio 20, a new DAW that I picked up, but we're doing pretty good on it. Today we're gonna to fix all the things that are wrong with the mix down, and we're gonna get this song banging. I promise you that. I already recorded the video, and there's a lot of great knowledge to be learned, guys. It is a bit long, but I promise you that if you follow it, you're gonna understand mixing and mastering a whole lot better. Now a few key things guys, when you're doing a mix and a master on a track, you gotta keep in mind there's the right way of doing it, but then after the right way of doing it, there's a point where it starts to deviate away into creative mixing, which is where mixing engineers are gonna be like, I would've done this differently, that sounds fine, that sounds good, but I would've done this, I would've made this wider, I would've made the clappy wide, I would've made the clappy mono. This is where it differentiates a lot and this is where creative mixing comes into play and it's a way that you can actually be unique. You can be unique in the way that you mix stuff, like for instance, Kid is a perfect example, not dirty bird artist but his mixes were very harsh very distorted some people would say oh man he's clipping that that's horrible while some people like it and again it's all gonna be due to creative as long as the idea is increased it has more of a banging feel aka the tracks more banging now with the mix and master and it sounds clearer cleaner that's all that should matter to you guys so keep those things in mind now before we get started guys if you guys want to support my channel you can find my work over at evilsounds.com you can buy sound bank sample packs that will help you make the music you love I and mean, if you are watching this video that means you're into tech house dirty bird style so I suggest you pick that one up if you want now I also want to give a thanks for those of you guys that have supported me because without you guys this content wouldn't be free for producers out there to watch you know a lot of this type of content is usually behind a paid subscription like Sonic Academy and stuff and I'm not bagging on them in any way that's their business but the reason I can do this that I can make a video every day you know Monday to Wednesday Thursday live streams and all that for you guys is because again for those of you guys that support me so again thank you guys and I hope that you guys take this series that I'm creating as a thank you from me to you guys so that you guys can learn how to make the music you love in a very simple matter and with that being said guys let's get started with this tutorial all right fam let's, let's chuck some coffee uh, all right let, we can get into mixing this down now Ooh. all right guys so today we're going to be doing a mix down and fl knows what's up Online content events, Maddox, mixing EDM kicks. <laughs> Good thing I don't want to mix no EDM kicks, guys. But start to finish series, guys. We're doing the mix on today, like I stated, and we're going to get straight into this. You guys are seeing everything. I have not rehearsed any of this, so I don't know yet what the song needs. Um, I've taken a, a good again four day break from this song, coming back to it after doing a Planet Aquarium, and we shall see how how it sounds like, you know, and we're going to do a couple of fixes to it. So Let's get rid of, of the master that we have here, which again, you know, I love using this master. And in the last start to finish series I did with a hardwell track, you know, I, I had this master and I left it on and I revolved my whole EQing around that master. But for this one, we're not, I'm not going to pussy out like that. I am going to give you guys uh, a legit kind of master that we can do inside of FL. So let's delete this bad boy. We don't need you no more ozone. But I love that preset again, guys, because at the end of the day, every master is going to be different. Everyone's going to have an opinion on what should go on the master and every track is going to have different mastering chains or signal flows you know because at the end of the day it just depends on how well you did in your mix down if you saturate enough if you compress enough and vice versa as you're gonna see okay so let's get straight into this guy so let's hear the track i am gonna add a little plugin in here called reference 4 and i'm gonna have to go into the plugin view here so let's view the the browser that's what i need so in the browser, you know, I have this plugin called Reference 4, which is super, or Reference, sorry, which is a really good plugin from In The Mix. I really like it. I'll use it all the time when I'm doing mix downs for people and for myself, because again, at the end of the day, it's kind of a little bit like quality control. It's a lot easier to mix a track when you have a goal, when you have something like, I want my track to sound like that in terms of the mix, rather than just going like, I'm just going to mix this to make it sound good. And then there's various ways you can go about that. So we're going to do that here. I'm going to input the Shiva soundtrack we have here. She was a mosquito and that's going to be it. So let's check it out. Thank you. 
like the way you make me feel. All right, so hearing that whole intro in my head, I'm already making notes. First off, the pad needs to get fixed. Um, for sure, we're going to do something with that pad. It's just taking up too much space. Vocal, I like. I love the vocal. I, I think it has a lot of body. Um, I just didn't really like this little part here. Um, ba, 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 ba. I like the way, you know, this part here. I think it could be done a lot better. So I'm going to make a note in my head for that. Uh, kick drum. Uh, I think there's too much bass in the intro, so we're going to have to fine-tune that. And you can actually tell to reference four. It was kind of telling me, yo, you have as much bass as this track, and this track's louder than yours. Okay, and then um, these little whoop sounds, uh, we are going to go in and fine tune them. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're going to play it from here. And let's get straight into it. So intro pass. That's more of what we want, like this. I'm lowering down where it's, it's at. I could have just lowered volume a little bit more, but we just need it there. Now we got the white noise hit right here. Um, we're going to ease up on that reverb. I forgot why we had so much reverb. I remember I didn't put that much. I feel like I fucked up somewhere, but it's all good. That's going to be over here. Mm. Also, we need to fix the timing of this. If you guys remember, um, we did something, but we're just going to fit it to tempo. Uh, fit the tempo. Fit the tempo. <laughs> All right. So it's the Um, yeah. Scrolling up makes it so that you can move these plugins faster, by the way. Thank you guys for that. I am reading your comments. I think we didn't even need to cue that high part down because the whole sound comes from the mids here. Uh, I do feel like we need to add a bit of compression just to like kind of ease it up a bit. I'm going to use the FL one, you know, just to get a vibe for FL's uh, things, you know, because Ableton has a lot of great audio effects. I'm sure Alpha has great ones as well that we need to discover. The only thing I don't like about some of the stuff is that it's not as visual. Um, and it doesn't help for me because I come from a very visual vibe. So we go into the dynamic section where we're going to be putting a fruity. Um, I heard the multiband is good, so we can maybe mess with that. Oh, never mind. It's not that one. Maybe I'm thinking about the Maximus, which is fruity's limiter. Uh, but we're not going to go with that one. No, 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 no. Oh, no, boy. We're not doing that. That one looks like fucking like it was made in the 2000s, bro. 1998. Yo, you guys were born in. Nah, we need something. Um, the fruity. The okay, so with compression, very standard, guys. You know, sometimes we're trying to do things like sometimes if you feel like your sound is just kind of feeling a little bit loose, like it doesn't really fit in the mix. It could be a number of things, like maybe some reverb and delay to make it fit the mix more uh, as well as compression sometimes you can compress it so that it's not so better yeah it's rather more like better like you, you you're killing dynamics on it for a purpose again we're trying to make it fit the track a little bit more so that's what i'm going to do this for no attack because there's nothing i want to preserve from that sample in terms of the transient and the release maybe a tad bit we're gonna ease up So now it fits a little bit better. There, there is another thing I need to add to this. We're going to move this guy down. We're going to add the delay. Now I'm putting the delay behind the compressor for a reason. And that is going to be because if you have anything behind a compressor, the compressor is just going to centrate the shit out of it. So imagine, you know, you, you have a nice bicep, you know, but you, you've been drinking a lot of water or, or, or you've been eating a lot. So now you have all that fatty muscle there. And imagine you, I don't know, you fucking do a cut. Um, and then you put a compressor, it's going to accentuate that cut. I guess best way to say steroids on that. But it, it just accentuates it. It makes it come to the front of the mix because you're lowering dynamics behind it. Now, if I put the reverb and the delay in front of the compressor, you're going to lose that vibe. So main idea there. So we're going to go into a delay. I guess we're going to try the free delay one more time. You guys told me that if I move the panning on the delay, I'll get the ping pong that I want. So we're going to go with that. 
So if I go ping pong effect, yeah, this is fully mono. Move it a little. It kind of gets. A there you go. Now it's starting to come out more. You can hear it. We're going to move this in front of the compressor, though, because I'm not liking how it's so in the front. And we're going to lower the wet a bit. The other thing I don't like about it is that it's staying too much in the front. Like it, so that means I just need to do like a cut so that I it kind of loses that. Like it does, sounds exactly the same as the original sound, which is something that we don't want because I don't want the sound to be like oh 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 oh. You know, I want it to be oh. oh, oh. It kind of kind of like the sounds fading away. There we go. A lot better. Okay, so fruity delay. We're gonna do that there. Um. I think that's going to be it for this sound. I don't think I need to add anything else to it. I, I have the standard, yeah. Um, we don't need to sidechain it because it's hitting on the offbeat of every um, of every hit, as you can see there. What we need to mess with. I think the drums are another one that we really need to mess with. Feel. Feel. You make me feel. So what we're going to do with the drums is we're going to need to create a bus for them. So I instantly need to grab an insert from over here. I'm going to all left it all the way if I can. Be right here. So we're going to right click, rename, call it the drum bus, and let's color it, um, let's see, let's color that blue, maybe, or purple. Okay. Just as long as it's away from all the other purples, we should be good. Um, I'm not, uh, sometimes I don't like to put the kick inside the drum bus for the, you know, because I feel like we ruin it. But we're going to try it. We're going to fucking try it. So let's click here. We're going to right click here. And then route to this track only, so that way this goes to the feel. You make me feel. Get rid of lows we don't need on that. So, you know, I'm using my thing. What the fuck? I don't know what that's for. Bandwidth, okay. Uh, but we need a low pass there. Uh, standard low pass. Get rid of the lows. Uh, I think that's what I was fucking with there. There you go. Little change, but it does a lot for us. So that's going to be the hat there. We're just going to add that to it. Maybe a little bit of delay to it. Just a tiny bit. Uh, so we're just going to ease up on that. Okay. Just a little bit there. Okay, cool. And then um, perk. We really do need to cue that one to get it to sound nice. You can see that there. So we're going to, uh, yeah, low pass. I'm going to start there. So let's see. First off, this area sounds pretty good. Way better. Just a, a bit more balance on it rather than it being so, ooh, it's like, dun, it's a little bit nice. Especially because we're adding air, you know, adding air is this term where you like just boost the highs, especially in the mixing world. That's what they call it. But we're, we're doing that here because I feel like this area is a little bit more brighter than this one. And we have a lot of brightness or sorry, a lot of warmth already in it. And I kind of wanted to have more of a clean vibe. So that's where that comes from. We're going to add a bit of a, of a saturator, which I think we can do it to the bus of the drums rather. But I want to saturate this guy a little bit more so it has more balls. Um, so we'll, we're going to see if we can do anything. Um, fruity Fast Distortion. We got Fruity Wave Shaper. Little Radiator. Um, that's that's going to be uh, Sound Toys. Uh, let's try the, the Fast Distortion. I've never used it. so Okay. Uh, let's see, Lord Thresh. Just little changes. Too much of it, and it starts to sound like a square because a lot of these toms, the way we make them, is using sine and triangle waves. So when you overdrive a, when you apply an overdrive distortion to a lot of these, you're gonna turn them into squares. So that's why, as I push that hard, it sounds like a fucking square. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, there we go. That's going to be good. Last thing I need on that is just individual compression on it. So what I'm going to do is use the fruity one again. And I like it because it's not giving us a visual aid. Like I was telling you guys, it didn't have it. But a lot of times it makes you use your ear so you can hear the compression working. You know, of course, have a good understanding of it rather than just like going ape shit on it. But on this one, we do have a transient to preserve. So I'm going to really hard. Can't hear anything. Now I'm going to ease up on the attack. Usually around 50. The more I increase the attack, you can see the more you start to hear that initial part. That's what the compressor is going to allow through before it clams down on it. Um, and then we're going to have a release of a very fast one, too, because the, the sound doesn't last that long. So it's not like we need a release set at one fucking second. Uh, so we're just going to ease up on it a bit there. All right. So now we're going to get rid of the we got from that to this. So a little bit tighter, a little bit more like cleaner, and it fits the track a lot better. Little things there, just using the fruity stuff, just to give you guys some knowledge there, I guess, with the fruity stuff. But again, it's not like I kind of know it felt. It's just the fact that a lot of compressors, distortions, and EQs are just work the same way. It's just that the vibes you get from like third-party plugins and Ableton's compressor, that stuff, you know, that's different. Um, that's why there's a fucking like a shit ton of compressors when they're doing all the same thing. There might be little variations in there, but as long as you understand what a compressor is doing, like the whole attack, the release, the dynamic side, the ratio, what to set these things at, then um, you can use any compressor out there after you find out where all these settings are located on the compressor and what makes the compressor different. Because there's like the API series, which is a little bit different, where you have a hard knee, soft knee that you can go with, and that's a whole other world as well. All right, now on the bus, which is what we always want to do, we're going to apply a bit of compression. And on the bus, I'm going to go with uh, a compressor uh, called the Vertigo VSC2. It's a third-party one, but I've, I haven't used it in a while, and I used to love it on drums, so I want to use it. So I'm going to go really hard with it, lower the attack on it. Again, with the attack, you're, what you're really doing when you're really you know, putting the compressor all the way down is you're letting certain parts of the sound go up past the comp past the compressor like oh the compressor is going to let those in but then everything else behind it gets kind of clamped so the attack lets you decide on whether you want to hold the initial part of it aka do you want to get rid of that click or do you want to let it pass through so the higher the attack usually you can so if you want more of a pumping style of compression you want a fast attack uh, um, a fast attack and a fast release you get that pump. Uh, if you want a compression that's more taming something down, you have to first decide whether you want the transients to get fucking tamed as well. And then you want a longer release. So that way it's it's clamping down on it. You know, there are some tips that I'm giving to you guys. Again, it just depends on how you want to do it because you can go various ways with this. I could be like, nah, fuck that, man. I don't want to be a pussy. I want to like get my drums to... So then you would go with that or if you want to have it more tamed. Again, it's all going to be up to you on how you decide you want to do this. Uh, no right or wrong there. You just have different choices. I'm just making sure that the volume increase I'm doing doesn't isn't i'm not thinking it sounds good because of the volume so that's why you see me checking the volume and lowering the makeup here my goal is to have that compressor aka this part here which is the game reduction how much volume you're losing because with compression you're losing volume i'm just trying to figure out where exactly you know it needs to land like i kind of want it to go back to zero so that we get the pump but i don't want it to be like Doom, like a fast pump. so notice it's the release really low it goes straight down fast it's like whoop, it goes straight down like a roller coaster sad to sad uh and then i point it does it but it doesn't do it that much it doesn't reach it so that's what i'm trying to look at so I think that's going to be the perfect setting for me there. And that's going to be it on that. And then I want to put a little bit of saturation. Now, I don't want to go with anything crazy. So I think the Fab Filter Saturn should be fine. We're going to put it behind the vertical. So let's go with a warm tube. Try that.
I like that. It gives it a little vibe, a little nice clean vibe to it. So we're going to use And then the last thing I want to do is have an EQ. And the parametric EQ from FL is fucking great. So I'm just going to use that. Everything below 29. I'm just going to do like, because I don't want to reduce, you know, you can see it's already reducing before you even get there. Now, uh, let's see, do we need to do it? I think that's all we really need. A little bit less. We, we're going to come back to that when we start to reference the track with like the Shiva sound one, like that reference plugin we just put right here. That's when it's you're going to start seeing a lot of change. And that's going to be more of a mass. So let's see how it sounds like together now, which is the important part. All right, let's see. What else did I have? Okay, so we got that fixed. We got that. All right, cool. Um, bass, we already did sort of like a mix on it, so we don't really need to get into it. And then the next thing are these sounds. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a master, mainly so I can get myself as loud as Shiva sounds track in the reference. And then from there, it's going to start to say, oh, you have too much highs, you have too little lows, you have too much mid, vice versa. From there, it gives us, it's a lot easier to kind of do a mix rather than just hearing and going with your gut feeling on it. Um, because I know it's a, a really hard for some people to just, you know, again, go in and know what to do so we're going to use this as quality control for ourselves so let's see we're going to go to the loudest part of the track which is going to be where these hits happen right here so we're going to go there we're going to go there and we're going to do a quick master nothing crazy we're just going to get it loud so uh, let's replace that with um usually let's see a pro c2 i think that would be a good one um yeah, we'll go with that. So I just want to create the catch the peaks. I don't know if this guy's good at that, but eh, we're going to put our trust in it. So fast release, fast attack. All we really want is to have that kind of grab onto certain clips of the sound. Not all of it. We're not doing compression here uh, like that. We're just capturing the, the, the peaks. There we go. We just wanted to grab a little bit so it captures the peaks. The the thing with that one is that it's going to grab on. Like, let's say we have somewhere in the song, we have this loud this loud sound. like rip. Then it's going to grab onto it and it's not going to fuck anything up along the mastering chain that we have. All right, from there, I do want to put an EQ. That's just going to get rid of a lot of things for us. So that's going to be like getting rid of the lows we don't need. The track itself is in the key of A. So if we go, we can go into A1, which is the highest that that sub's going to be at, which is 55. So A0 is below that, so we, we're not using this guy. So we're going to cut around 40, I'm going to say, around there. And the reason for that, again, guys, because the fundamental of our bass is going to be at 55, which is where most of the power in that low end is going to come. Anything below that, it's not going to really give us much. So that's the reasoning behind that cut that I'm about to do, which I know some of you guys aren't going to agree with, but for me it works, and I, and I still use it, so fuck you. All right, so, um, yeah, we're going to do a hard cut there, and it's going to be at around 45. <laughs> I really want to change that. I want to change the way that cut looks because it's where we were reducing there. So that's yeah, going to increase. That's right. We're also going to cut frequencies we don't really need in the high end. So everything above, like usually 18 is the magic number for that. Again, this is just going to give us headroom and get rid of free, like, you know, little things we don't need in case they're up there. There we go. I mean, I wish I could pull this up. I think I can. There we go. Uh, perfect. Okay. And then just harder cut. There we go. Around 18. Yeah. I like the way you All right, the next thing I'm going to do, guys, is very simple. I'm just going to get this track to be as loud as Shiva Sans. I don't think there's nothing else for me to really do in this track like that. Mm, you know, maybe add a Lin and B or a multi-band uh, compression. 
So I think I'm going to go with that guy and, and add it. And then from there, I'm just going to try and get the track as loud as Shiva sound so I can start to use it as an actual reference. The plug in here, that's what I'm talking about. Because I need to be as loud as him so that I can get the frequencies right. That's mainly my key thing there. Um, so we're going to go with uh, the Lin MB if I can find it. L-I-N, Linear Multiband Compressor. got to sound smart. Uh, where the fuck are you? It's t -t 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 limitless. Uh, there we go, Lin MB. I'm using that one as my multiband compressor, so that's why I want it. All right, so we're going to put that one there. And let's put that one a little bit there. Here, I'll use an SSL again. I think I didn't have it on. <laughs> that's why it didn't work. So that's my newbie mistake. Some of you guys might have commented about it already, but it's all good. Uh, we're going to go with an SSL compressor. There we go. Uh, there. And this one's going to be more of like the standard compression. I want this to attack at 3. Release at around 0.3, and then we can go down on it. So let's see that. I like the way you make me Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this guy is pretty easy. Just clamp down on it. I like the way you make me feel. Usually this one is right. So here what I'm doing is I'm just clamping down on those frequencies just a tad bit to add that compression. So now my point here is to get loud as loud as Shiva sounds. So hopefully, again, we're at the same spot of the track. Maybe if I click mirror, um, we'll be there. And then from here, once I get it equally as loud, guys, then I can start to get to work really fast on those lead sounds. That's what I need right there. Um, I need a little bit of a guide for these sounds so I can make them sit a little bit more properly in the mix. So let's go over here again. I don't know why it does and I'm trying to get it down. It's too loud. All right, so I'm where I'm around where he's at. So now I can start to use this as a guide. Okay, so let's start from here. We're gonna check out the drums first because right there he's playing the drums in a pad just like I am. So we're gonna see what we have here. So, okay, so this is where we can start getting into it now. We have a bit too much of mids compared to him in the intro now. What this is telling me is that either one, my clap is too loud in the song, there's something about it, and you can cleanse it. So we're gonna hit play again there. Pat's a bit too loud, we're gonna ease up on it. Feel. It makes me feel. It makes me feel. 
obviously the vocal we have is obviously influencing that a lot because he doesn't have one so that's going to be another big problem but i still feel like it has maybe a bit too much mid lows on it uh we'll use this one here or that's our eq uh We're gonna let it drop. I like the way you make me feel. Again, using that as a guy. We need to ease up on it on something on the EQ. So we're gonna put an EQ. Just we're gonna do kind of like a cut of the highs on it. So we just get like kind of like that nice warm one that we need. I like the way you make me feel. You make me feel. I think I might get rid of the kick going into here. I feel like that's kind of reducing in the low end for it. So I want my drums in there, but I think I made a mistake doing that. I usually don't put it there. Uh, route to this track. No, route to this track only. There we go. All right, so that's going to be a lot better there. Again, you know, we don't want to route sometimes the kick into the bus channel like that because sometimes we're doing stuff that might reduce certain parts of the kick we don't want it to reduce. Anyways, let's go back into this. I just want to see how my low end is compared to the now that we have that off. Now we go. Now the low end's back. Okay, so we need to find like a balance though. There we go. We got it. We're gonna ease up on that invisible limiter just a bit. Okay, let's get a bit of that. We're gonna put any cue on that bus of that lead of that you know lead that's playing. Uh, we just need to fine tune that a bit. Get rid of the lows we don't need. Pretty much on it. That's about all we need to do. All right, so we're gonna put in some of those lows back. I don't want to lose body on it. Da da shot. I'm
I'm like, what happened to the automations we had, dude? Uh, I think I moved to the, yeah, so it needs to be here. <laughs> Come on, where the fuck? There we go. All right, so that shot there, we need to fix that one. That's going to be the last one we fix. And then from there, guys, we're going to do... Um, I think we, we're done with the master because we're trying to get it to sound like his. And after we have all this, we should be good. Um probably next time what we're gonna do is add the final touches to the track there's things i'm hearing right now that i'm not liking like the transitions are not as clean as i want them to be and vice versa those are things i'm gonna kind of be like you know what i'm not gonna reference shiva sounds track for that i'm gonna do my own thing there so after this one we're not gonna reference the track no more we're just gonna go with our own thing to get those transitions to sound a lot more smoother rather than having you know kind of like the similar vibe he has which i'm not a fan of We just need to get this part right, that's all. So we're gonna use this here. And then maybe let it go into the low end because you can kind of hear it's eccentric. I like the way it sounds. It's almost there, but let's see. Let's use Shiva as a rap for how it sounds in his mids. You can kind of hear there's not that much mids. It's kind of more of a, you know, it's a little bit more confined where mine's is a little bit more. So I need to figure out how to get that to work. Um, it could be as simple as just putting an EQ on the, you know, on the master. I think it's going to be right there. Um, so let's try that. So let's go reference off. There we go. Alright, so... I'm going to end the, the thing there, guys. We did a quick mix down, as you guys saw, drums and all that. This is going to be a long video, so hopefully you made it to the end. And if you did, hopefully, you know, this helps you guys out with the mixing and what to do and whatnot. Um, I like to use reference. Again, you know, it's not right or wrong to use it. In fact, you know, a lot of times you shouldn't over obsess over the fact if your EQ or your thing is lining up with his. You should use it as a guide because remember, there's always that leeway of creative mixing that you can go into. Like, you could be different about it. And mixing is one of the ways you, you, you can be, like, unique like oh man his mix sounds always have this unique vibe to them that these guys don't and that's something again we're somewhere where you can be unique so i love to show you guys this route here because again it's showing you how to sound like them um not as hard you, you really just have to pay attention to those little fine details but at the end of the day you can say fuck all this and you can make your own mix how you want how you think it sounds good but again at the end of the day it's better to f know how a mix sounds good and achieve a mix that people have accepted already because AK Shiva sounds a big artist so he has followers that hear his music and they like the song so you're assuming that they also like the mix downs on it 
from there, then you can be like, all right, you know, you don't want too much highs, you don't want too much lows, too much mids. But from there, you can kind of be like, I want to pan this and, you know, do various things, guys. But I'm going to end the video here because I really have to take shit. <laughs> and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video where we're going to be finalizing this track and making the transitions a lot better and just fine tuning everything. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series, Ninjas. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.